sheep goes and he's on the outskirts and he's going to get, he keeps getting off and getting off and he's going to get ate by the wolf because he's on the outskirts of the camp and he's not where the shepherd can keep a direct eye on him. He's not with the rest of the flock. He's out by himself doing something he's not supposed to be doing. So we see that shepherd go out. He leaves the rest of the flock because he already knows that those ones are obedient and they stay together. And he goes and he gets that one. Now, the first time he doesn't break his leg, second time he doesn't break his leg, but the third time he breaks his leg and he puts him on his shoulders and he waits for that leg to heal itself. Then when he takes the lamb off, the sheep off of his shoulders and he puts it back <coughs> in the fold, that sheep does not stray, it stays with the fold. It was a hard lesson. No one wants to have their leg broke. But what was the shepherd's message? Shepherd's message was this. I love you enough that I don't want you killed. Because the enemy, the wolf, is out there. And he's seeking to devour, to kill, to steal, to destroy. He wants to take those of us that are on the outside. So it's very important that we have to have that fold mentality. We have to be in the fold. We have to be one with another, and we have to be one with God. Okay? So God wanted to take this relationship that he had. He pursued a relationship with Adam. He made a covenant with Adam. He talked with Adam. He came down and walked with Adam. How do we know this? Because it said in the cool of the day he was looking for Adam, right? <coughs> and where was Adam? He was hiding because he had sinned. Never said God stopped coming down. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God stopped. God knew he had sinned. God knows everything. So God still kept his appointment. Even though Adam got off track, God still kept his appointment with Adam. And he still came to take care of Adam. And he clothed Adam when Adam confessed his sin. Who told you you were naked? So he clothed Adam. He covered, his love covered Adam. And he still continued to walk with Adam. No, the first Adam. Adam and Genesis. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, so he came down, and so they had a face to face conversation every day and we see that it was when sin entered that there was that disconnect the disconnect wasn't with God the disconnect was with us when Adam sinned he disconnected us from God the Father because God the Father is what holy and just and he can't look on sin so do you think that God then decided to put this whole plan in motion to send Jesus no I believe when in the beginning, they had the plan. In the beginning. Because everything that God does is perfect. We don't know when he threw Lucifer out of heaven. It doesn't give us a time stamp of when that event happened. Jesus tells about it. I was there. I saw Lucifer fall. Does he not say that? I was there. But it doesn't tell us when that time was just tells us that he was there and he witnessed the event. So that disconnect, there had to be a conversation that Satan had to have with God in the heavenlies, and God put this plan in motion. It wasn't a plan to redeem sin. It was a plan to redeem his creation, to bring us back into right standing with him. Amen. That's what it was. Okay? Throughout the Bible, as you go through Genesis, you see God using different men and women. Jesus was not there yet. The Holy Spirit was not released upon all flesh. But God pursued a relationship with each and every one of these people. And I'm going to give them to you. He called some of them just. He called some of them perfect. 
He called some of them man of grace. All throughout the Bible, he was showing, picking different ones and showing us through these men, as imperfect as they are, because when we read about them, we're going to see their flaws. It's real easy to pick out the negative, isn't it? But when God appointed them to do a job, he gave them a title of their finished work. When he looks at us, we might have a name change. I might be Annette, but he looks at me and he calls me something different and he hasn't revealed it to me yet because I'm not finished yet. And he might look at you and you might, have, you might not be William. You're in the process of being. But he changes our name. And it becomes the finished product. And we're good and perfect in his eyes. In his eyes. doesn't matter what we see. Because we can't see the way that he sees. We can't. Because we're just here in all of creation. We don't even know what's out there. But he's sitting up there and... We see that much, and he sees much broader. He knows how many hairs are on our head. So what does that mean? If you go bald, does he not know the hairs are on your still head? He knows. He knows how many hairs were there. Enoch, go to Genesis chapter 5. Now, there's not a whole lot written about Enoch, is there? Chapter 5, verse 22. When any, everybody there, say amen. amen. Okay. Enoch, oh, I'm going to start in 21. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. After he begat Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God in a time where the Holy Spirit was not there. He was not released. So God graced Enoch to have a personal relationship. Okay? You all see that? He pursued a relationship with Enoch. And because he pursued a relationship with Enoch, and Enoch grasped hold, doesn't tell us too much, except one word, walked. How can any two walk together lest they agree? So, so if, I, if I take Cliff's hand, and he walks that way, and I go walking this way, how are we going to walk? He's going out that door, I'm going out this yeah, door. Opposite we're going opposite direction, right? Yeah. What's going to happen? Eventually we're going to come apart. Yeah. We're going to go separate ways. So Enoch had a hold of God. And he walked with God, which means wherever God went, Enoch went. Where God went, Enoch went. They were together. They were like peas and carrots. Okay. Enoch stayed walking. Remember, they did not have this to read. They had it passed down. The patriarch of the family would tell stories. This one begat this one, this one begat this one, and so on and so forth. And these they didn't have any of this. They relied on verbal communication to tell the things of God. Now, we don't have a lot in the first five books that tells us about God. It's not until we get into Deuteronomy, right, Exodus, where we start learning about his laws. But he walked with God. He stayed in the presence of God. So much so that he didn't have to face death. He didn't have to face it. He didn't have to suffer. He just got taken up, gone just taken up like, like Elijah. Elijah knew because he what? He prepared Elisha, right? 
And Elisha knew because he said to 